Hello, it's Doug Kronizel. I'm excited to be filling in this week as host for Victoria. Welcome to On the Ballot with Ballotpedia, where we take a closer look at the week's top political stories. Ballotpedia connects people to politics by providing neutral, nonpartisan, and reliable information on our government, how it works, and where it's headed. We're here to give you the facts so you can form your own opinion. Thanks for being with us. Today, we're looking ahead to 2023's ballot measure landscape. Here to walk us through everything is staff writer Jackie Mitchell. Hi, Jackie. Hey, Doug. So we usually start off with a little small talk on the show. I'm typically on the receiving end of it. So Jackie, I'm curious, without giving away any of your gifts, how is your holiday prep going so far? It's going great. I have all of my gifts ready to go. Our tree is getting fuller and fuller by the day. How about you? Mine's going well. Mine's going well. Did some of the the small business Saturday shopping um, after Thanksgiving. But you you also have a a pet bird. Does the bird get a Christmas present each year? My cats get Christmas presents. I don't think they know their presents. Yes, he absolutely does. He has a whole stocking with a picture of him on it, actually. (laughs) That is great. Well, that is something to look forward to. But we're still a few weeks away from the new year, which makes this a very early preview, what we're doing today, of the ballot measure landscape. But as our listeners know, that's exactly the sort of thing we love to do here on the podcast. As of the beginning of this week, Ballotpedia is tracking 55 potential state ballot measures, including 46 initiated ballot measures and nine referred ballot measures that could appear on ballots across the country in 2023. Jackie, what's the difference between the two, initiated and referred? Yeah, so it's kind of in the name, you know, we have our citizen initiated measures, which appear on the ballot after citizens submit enough signatures for their proposed measure to appear on the ballot. And those signature requirements vary by state. And then we have referred measures, which are referred to the ballot by state legislatures. And those also have their own separate requirements in each state. And then beyond that, we also have some different kinds of measures. We have automatically referred ballot measures, which show up on the ballot after, you know, a state constitution maybe requires it without any input from the state legislature legislature or initiative petition. We see those a lot with constitutional convention questions, and we had a couple of those on the ballot in 2022. Now, not all of those potential ballot measures actually end up on the ballots, though, do they? And and how do the numbers that we're seeing right now with 55 potential you know, measures coming up in 2023, how does that measure to odd year elections in the past? Yeah. So since it's still so early on, we are seeing a lot of filings right now that ultimately will not progress through the process. And it's likely that the signature drives will not even be launched for a majority of those filings. We will see next year's potential measures whittle down a bit as time goes on, and it becomes known whether or not a campaign is serious about a measure and a signature drive is launched. For context, from 2011 to 2021, the average number of statewide ballot measures in an odd-numbered year was 33. And more specifically, we see an average of about five initiated measures and 28 referred measures in an odd-numbered year. Yeah, it's it's far easier to say that you would like to initiate a, a ballot measure than it is to gather the tens of thousands of signatures needed to needed to do that. I'm wondering if you could briefly explain why there are so fewer ballot measures in odd numbered years compared to the even ones. You know, for example, you know, in 2020 there were 129, 167 in 2018, pretty much more than 150 ballot measures in every even year since 2000. Yeah, so it's actually because not many states allow measures on odd year ballots. You know, typically our big elections are held in the even numbered years. Only four of the 26 states with a process for citizen initiatives allow for ballot measures to be placed on the ballot in an odd numbered year. And those states include Colorado, Maine, Ohio, and Washington. Other states that frequently feature statewide measures referred to the ballot by state legislatures include Louisiana, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Texas. That makes sense to me. Fewer states allow the process, so it's not going to happen quite as often. As of December 11th, two statewide ballot measures were certified for the ballot in two separate states in 2023, Oklahoma and Louisiana. So now these are, they're they're certified, like they will be on the ballot. And I'd love to take a closer look at both of these if we can, Jackie. What's the story in Oklahoma where state question 820 is proposing recreational marijuana legalization? 
Yeah, so State Question 820 is on the 2023 ballot. It was sponsored by a group called Oklahomans for Sensible Marijuana Laws, and they were initially initially targeting the 2022 ballot, and they submitted enough signatures to qualify for the 2022 ballot. Uh, however, due to legal challenges and statutory deadlines for ballot inclusion, the measure could not be placed on the 2022 ballot, and Governor Kevin Stitt ordered the measure on the March 7th, 2023 ballot instead. We see this a lot in Oklahoma, where the governor will put a measure on a primary ballot. It happened in 2020 uh, with State Question 802, which was for Medicaid expansion. And it happened in 2018 when Governor Mary Fallon placed a medical marijuana initiative on the June primary ballot. So 2023 Oklahoma marijuana legalization. It will allow adults 21 and older to possess, transport, and distribute up to one ounce of marijuana, eight grams of marijuana in a concentrated form, and or eight grams or less of concentrated marijuana in marijuana-infused products. Under the initiative, individuals can also possess up to six mature marijuana plants and up to six seedlings. Marijuana sales would be taxed at 15%. And if listeners are curious about how the state is suggesting that tax revenue be spent, they can check out the link that we'll include in the show notes. The initiative would also provide a process for individuals to seek the expungement or modification of certain previous marijuana-related convictions or sentences, which is something we've seen other states prioritize as well. The measure is sponsored by Oklahomans for Sensible Marijuana Laws, and so far they have raised $2.7 million and spent $2.5 million. All right, so definitely a, a, a lot of money going into this, something that was planned for 2022, but... Now we're going to see it in 2023. And how how does what's happening in Oklahoma fit into the marijuana legalization story nationwide? And I feel like every cycle we hear about another state or two states that have a ballot measure regarding marijuana legalization. Where 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 do things stand on that front right now? Yeah, so in 2022, marijuana legalization measures were on the ballot in five states. It was approved in Maryland and Missouri and was defeated in Arkansas, North Dakota, and South Dakota. So after the November elections, we now have 21 states and Washington, D.C. that have legalized the possession and personal use of marijuana. Well, we will have to wait to find out a bit more about the fate of marijuana legalization in the Sooner State. But for the second confirmed ballot measure of the year, we'll have to wait even longer, all the way until November 18th. This is the one in Louisiana, the Louisiana Legislative Veto Sessions Amendment. What would this amendment change, Jackie? So this amendment would provide that the legislature can consider vetoed bills during a regular or extraordinary session rather than convening a separate veto session. It would also provide that the governor's deadline to act on a bill is based on the legislative session in which the bill was passed. Sounds almost as riveting as marijuana legalization. We're not in the business of making predictions, but do you have an idea of when the landscape might be a little bit more solidified, when those 55 potential ballot measures might be certified or rejected? Yeah. So the next signature deadline that we'll see is December 30th in Washington state. So that's when we'll get our next update. But as far as the other states that allow initiatives, uh, those deadlines will occur in 2023. Perfect. Well, we'll have to have you back to walk us through it once we've got that landscape all sorted out. Thank you so much for being on with us today, Jackie. Yeah. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, everyone. This is Jeff Palais, Ballotpedia's Editor-in-Chief. The Ballotpedia Fellows Program gives high school and college students interested in politics a service opportunity that helps develop subject matter expertise in political research and analysis. Fellows play an instrumental role in helping us expand our data-driven analysis of American politics and increase the amount and quality of information available to voters about their local elections. Fellows will directly contribute to putting information on our articles for voters. To learn more and apply, search fellows at ballopedia.org or via the link in our show notes. All I want for Christmas is political trivia. It's my gift to you. Well, I guess it always is. It's Food Note Facts with Paul Rader. Today's a little bit of a more obscure topic than usual. Swearing in dates when public officials start serving a new term. And today's trivia question, which is the only state legislature where the House and Senate can start new terms on different dates? More on that later. So you got elected to public office. Now what? 
Well, before you start serving in the role for the new term, you must wait some time to get sworn in, unless you are serving in offices such as the Florida, Hawaii, and Tennessee state legislatures, or on the state executive side, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Those offices got sworn in the day of the 2022 election, but those are far from the norm. In fact, we'll see 15 different swearing-in dates for state legislatures this term. Nine state legislative terms began on four different dates in November 2022, and another seven state legislative terms began on three different dates in December 2022. All the other 34 states start on various dates in January. But how do those states decide swearing-in dates? The vast majority of the time, it's prescribed by state constitutions, but sometimes it will be due to state statutes, the less interesting cousin of state constitutions. And the wording can be a little bit different between states, but it's still the same or at least a somewhat similar rule between them. Uh, In many cases, swearing-ins always happen on a certain day of the week. Plurality of states, 12 of them, always swear in their legislators on a Wednesday. 10 states always do it on a Monday. And 7 states always do so on a Tuesday. Some state legislators are sworn in on December or January 1st specifically. And there are some more unusual ones like Oklahoma, which happens 15 days after the election. There are even a handful of cases where swearing in dates vary depending on when it is in the week, like in Montana, where legislators are sworn in on the first Monday of January, unless that Monday is January 1st, in which case it is the first Wednesday in January. Hey, I didn't write these rules, okay? As for state executives, there are a handful that have already started their terms following the 2022 elections in November and December. Those are Alaska and Hawaii's governors and lieutenant governors, the aforementioned Office of Hawaiian Affairs, go figure, in Hawaii, and two of the seats on Alabama's Public Service Commission, or PSC. Louisiana's PSC will have two members sworn in on December 31st. All the other elected state executives that won in 2022 will start in January, many of those happening on January 1st or 2nd, including in the territory of Guam. Shout out to Guam. I tell you, they can't get no respect around here. That's uh, my exceptional Rodney Dangerfield impression. In most cases, states will swear in all of their respective executives that won in the 2022 elections on the same date. That's what 33 states do, although a few of them only had one state executive election in 2022, like Tennessee for a governor. But in 10 states, at least one state executive will differ in when they are sworn in, such as South Dakota, where the 2022 winners will all be sworn in on January 2nd, except for the Public Utilities Commission on January 3rd. We're a little unsure about which category Nevada is in because of uncertainty about the Board of Regents states, but all of Nevada's other 2022 elected executives start on January 2nd. Now, enough fooling around. Back to the trivia question I asked you earlier. Which is the only state where the House and Senate can start new terms on different dates? And that answer is Iowa. Iowa's House always gets sworn in on January 1st, but Iowa's Senate does on the first day of January that is not a Sunday or legal holiday. And in 2023, Iowa's Senate term starts on January 3rd. And that's it for today's trivia. I'm getting sworn out for this episode. Back to you, Doug E. Fresh. That's our internal name for Doug. Thanks, Paul. That is all for this week's episode of On the Ballot. Thanks again to Jackie for coming on the show today. Make sure you don't miss an episode by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. I'll be back next week with Victoria and our editor-in-chief, Jeff Palais, to take a look at our coverage highlights from 2022. Should be a lot of fun. Until then, if you have any questions, comments, or love for Ballotpedia, feel free to send it to us at ontheballot at ballotpedia.org or on Twitter at Ballotpedia. I'm Doug Kroneisel. Thanks for listening.